Now, a question I'm asked probably more than any other question is where can I get Cisco iOS images? And David, can you give them to me? And the answer is no. I'm not allowed by law to give you Cisco iOS images. You have to get them from cisco.com. So the way I'm gonna do that is go to viral.cisco.com. And what I'm gonna do is click get viral. Notice if you don't have viral, you need to buy it for $200 a year. Don't get upset with me. That's the way Cisco are doing it. I have no control over that. But what I'm gonna do here is log in with my username and password. So log in, go to my account, and then click download viral. I'm redirected to the viral download website. Now I've heard a lot of guys saying that viral images are not downloadable. That is not true. To see the viral images, simply click expand all. And then in the list on the left, you'll see options such as iOS V or iOS V layer two. So in this example, I'm gonna download the latest iOS V layer two image. So I'm gonna click on download. I'm gonna accept the license agreement. And as you can see here, the viral image is being downloaded to my local computer. I could do something similar with iOS V. Now the dates and versions are strange on the Cisco website. This is an older release than this release. So I'm going to download 15.6.2, click accept a license agreement, and then once again, that will be downloaded to my local computer. So you need to download the images from Cisco Viral. I can't give them to you. You need to download them yourself. If you don't have an account, then purchase one from Cisco. In my example, I've already got these files, so I've copied them to my downloads directory. But let me warn you, you have to have a paid subscription to access those images. Don't get upset at me or Juno3, get upset with Cisco. That's the policies that they have in place. Other vendors such as Cumulus will allow you to download their images by simply registering and Arista do the same. But with Cisco images, you need to have a paid subscription. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is start GNS3 again. And what I'll do here is start a new blank project, which I'll call iOS V. Now, I was a bit quick there. I should have waited for the GNS3 GUI and VM to start up. So I'll do that again. iOS V lab. Click OK. So my lab is created. What I'm gonna do here is go to browse routers and click new template because I have no routers currently. What I'm gonna do is install an appliance from the GNS3 server and click next. As you can see here, there's a lot of devices, not just routers shown in the list. If I click update from online registry, that connects to GNS3 online and updates the registry. That'll update the list of appliances shown in the list. I'm not gonna worry too much about that. I'm simply gonna select Cisco iOS V and click install. Now I can install the appliance on the GNS3 VM. So I'm gonna click next. Click next again. And notice it's found the operating system. So the operating system is the operating system that I downloaded from Cisco, that's this one. Now notice it's still missing the startup config. So I'm gonna select that and click download. That takes me to Source Forge, and it will download that file to my local computer. So I'm gonna click Save. And then I'm gonna click Refresh in the GNS3 GUI and notice this appliance is now ready to be installed. I have the operating system, I have the startup config, so I'm gonna click next and click yes to install the appliance. 
I'm told that there's no default password and enable password. The operating system is copied to the GNS3 VM. I'm gonna click finish. I'm told that the appliance is installed. I'm gonna click OK. So the appliance is now available. I'm gonna drag that into the workspace. Okay, in this example, I'm getting an error. So what I'll do is recreate that. So I'm gonna delete it and simply go through the template again. I've sometimes had issues with this. So click install, next, next. It's found the appliance. Click next, click yes, click finish. Try again. And there you go. It's now available. I'll drag another one into the topology. And what I'll do here is drag an Ethernet switch into the topology, which I'll run on the GNS3 VM and click OK. So I've got a topology of two routers. Don't like the symbols, so I'll select them. Click change symbol. I'm gonna go for affinity blue circles. And I'm gonna click router. Click OK. I'm gonna change the symbol of the switch. Click OK. So I've got those in my topology. I'll make this bigger so it's easy to see. And what I'll do is connect the devices to each other like that. Show the connections. And what I'll do now is start these up and open up consoles. Now, because I'm running this within VMware Fusion on my Mac, it's gonna be very slow to boot up. If you're running on bare metal, it'll be a lot quicker than what it's gonna do here in my topology. That's okay for this demonstration, but it's really recommended that you run on bare metal you probably don't wanna do what I'm doing here, where I'm running nested virtualization within nested virtualization. So what I'll do is pause the video at this point to let these devices have time to boot up. What I'm essentially gonna do once they boot up is configure IP addresses on them and make sure that they can ping each other. Very simple lab, but this shows you the full integration and installation of GNS3. Okay, so it's taken a while, but the routers have booted. Once again, I don't recommend that you do this multiple nested virtualization that I'm doing. I'm simply doing it to record this video. So on the first router, I'm gonna type conf t. I'm gonna set the router name as router one. I'm gonna go onto the gigabit zero zero interface and no shut the interface. I'll configure an IP address of 10.1.1.1. And this is part of the problem with my system running so slow. Easy to make typing mistakes. As you can see there, I'm getting traceback messages because the CPU utilization is high on this device, but I should be able to ping myself on the router which I can. So notice router one is able to ping itself. But let's configure router two and see if we can get the two routers to ping each other. So on router two, conf t, host r2, interface gigabit zero zero, no shut the interface. IP address 10.1.1.2. Dot 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 with a slash 24 mask, running really slowly once again in my network, type end, can this router ping 10.1.1.1, which is router one. So we're pinging from router two to router one across the ethernet switch, and that works. 
Can router one ping router two? Yes, it can. Very slow once again, but it's working. I could, as an example, enable a routing protocol like EIGRP. So show IP EIGRP interfaces. Again, running really slowly here. So while I'm waiting for that, I'll type the commands into router two. As you can see here, router one has EIGRP enabled on gigabit zero zero. So on router two, I'll enable EIGRP in autonomous system 100. As you can see there, an adjacency has been formed between the two routers. So show IP EIGRP neighbor. Router one has a neighbor relationship to router two. So if I created a loopback on router two of let's say 2.2.2.2, .2 .2 .2, Subnet mask. What should happen on router one is it should learn that route, which it has done. So it's learned the loopback of router two, and it should be able to ping the loopback of router two. And there you go. It's very slow once again in my topology, but that's okay you're going to want to install GNS3 on bare metal and not do what I've done here. I'm once again running on a Mac. I am running Windows within VMware Fusion and then running GNS3 within Windows within VMware within my Mac OS. It's only because I want to record this on my Mac computer. You would want to run this on a bare metal Windows computer, such as your laptop. But there you go. That's how you download, install, configure GNS3. I've shown you how to install the graphical user interface on Windows. I've shown you the web UI. I've shown you the GNS3 VM. I've shown you how to do the integration, how to get a iOS image into GNS3, how to get the network working. I'm David Bumble. I want to wish you all the very best. And don't forget, if you don't mind, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video. Cheers.